everyone. Welcome to this Confluence Basics training. I'm going to give some folks a little bit more time to trickle in, but glad y'all are here with me. All right. Curious if anyone has been to one of these before. I've had some repeats in the basics and I've had some other courses. Uh, so please use that chat and just let me know uh, if you've been in one of these before with me. All right, we'll give folks just another couple of minutes. Oh, hey, Angela. No worries. I do these for folks who have never had any Confluence training, and I'll talk a little bit about my experience not getting trained with Confluence. Andy, good to see you again. We've got a cyber wolf in the house. Mr. DeBell, always good to see you. All right, also a bit curious where folks are uh, calling in from. I'm in the Bay Area, California, um, but I've seen folks from many places around the world on this call. I'm always curious just kind of the country folks are around. Royalty, ooh, which, uh, which monarchy? <laughs> All right, one minute more and I'll get started with a very exciting slide deck that I'm sure everyone will love. Um, we will also of course get hands-on in Confluence, um, but I do like to start with just some level setting on concepts and terms and ideas and things. New York, Delaware. Uh, I grew up on the East Coast in Connecticut, so always good to see some East Coasters around. I haven't been back in about 20 years, unfortunately. I've been back to visit, but not to, not to stay for any period of time. Oh, Cyberwolf Jimmy is Immy. Got it. <laughs> All right, a little bit of a joke there. All right, folks, I'm going to get started with my slide deck. Uh, of course, more people will join. We tend to see folks trickling in until about the 5, 10 minute mark. Uh, this is recorded, so as folks come in, I'll remind them of that. Uh, you can always watch this one or any other of the basics or other topics I've done. I've got one recorded on templates. I've got a recording from an in-person space admin training in the works. I'll post that soon. And I'm doing one live on space admins near the end, uh, I think, end of April on the 25th. If there are other topics about Confluence you want me to dig into, please either put it in the feedback form you might get uh, from Atlassian after this or drop it in the chat. Uh, I'll keep doing the basics because to me that's really important stuff, um, especially as you hear my story, why I'm so passionate about that. But if there are other uh, topics you want to learn about Confluence, access, integration, it is good to have another Canuck in the house. I was born in Alberta, so. Okay. If there are other topics. Uh, this is, again, as I mentioned, so Confluence be, Basics. It's today and right now. Um, form, my partner uh, kind of gets driven nuts by my headshot on chat. this because you can already see uh, me. I'll keep doing the basics because to me that's really important um, stuff. So who am I? Especially I'm Rob. Story, I'm I've so been in IT my that. entire project. I started other, on an uh, IT help desk in college, literally just hauling old computers around. From there, I got into project work, installing 
enterprise resource planning or ERP systems. Okay. So the large scale systems, a shipyard or industrial site jar tech space. So a lot of the examples you'll hear me use relate to the people or HR teams. I've been using Confluence about eight years. Um, I've used other knowledge-based knowledge management collaboration platforms, um, but Confluence almost exclusively for eight years now. And I have a lot of online training courses. I get a lot out of helping folks bridge the gap between, I don't know how this system works and I have to do my job to I can now do my job. So I'm very interested in the everyday yeah, user. And my background with Confluence started when I, I went to a job and I asked where the knowledge base was to look something up and someone just pointed at the Confluence icon and said go there. I don't know and that was it. That was my training. I, I figured out how to log in but no one showed me how to make a page. No one showed lives easier not to frustrate us and get in the way. So the more people I can help overcome those seemingly little hurdles but they're massive for the individual the better. My contact information is in the bottom left. Please feel free to email me with questions, jump over to my blog to see what I'm posting about, or check out my YouTube. I regularly post on project management, Confluence, Jira, those kinds of things. But they're massive for the individual, the better. Live and on delay. Uh-oh. I'm sorry about that. I seem to be having a possible challenge with my streaming software. If you can still hear me, I will come right back and try to fix this. I'm sorry about that. I seem to be having a possible challenge with my streaming software. Okay. I'm not 100% sure what happened there, but my computer decided to restart itself again. It's the second one of these that's happened in, so I appreciate y'all's patience, and I might go find a new computer soon. Where was I? Right, I'm um, talking about my background. Um, I started using Confluence. I was just told this thing exists with no training at all. No one explained anything about it to me. Um, which made it a little bit more than hard to use. And just trying to get my slide deck back. All right. Thank you, Jimmy. I appreciate that letting me know it's looking okay. <laughs> I am running into an issue sharing my screen, which will make sharing Confluence very, very challenging. <laughs> oh, thank you, Joanna. It's, um, you know, technology is wonderful, except when it stops working. And right now, I don't seem to be able to share my screen with you. So I apologize. I might have to do this again. If you could please bear with me. Okay. Again, my apologies for these technical challenges. I will uh, find the folks responsible and ensure they are properly disciplined myself. Um, so interaction, uh, just to pick up right where I left off after explaining who I am. This is as interactive as I can get, but use the chat. I'll ask, how do you feel with a concept or idea? Keep putting those comments in there. Let me know if I'm doing something stupid or if something breaks, but also let me know how comfortable you are with a topic. A one through a five, a five meaning I'm super comfortable, a one meaning I don't know anything about it. I've had people tell me they are complete noobs or newbies, and that's exactly what this course is for. So please don't be shy about saying, Rob, I don't know what access is or what a space is. So when I ask for your comfort, a five, really comfortable, a one, I don't know anything. A quick agenda, uh, I'll go through some concepts in this slide and I'll give us some, but we're gonna review some basic concepts to level set everyone to make sure we all understand what a space is or access or templates. After that, we'll get hands-on. I'll rely on your chat questions and comments and ideas to help me figure out where should I go. I will just kind of meander through it and I'll try to touch on everything. But if there are specific topics the 34, 35 folks on here want to see, please let me know in that chat. Angela, I just see a lot of ones I haven't even asked yet, but I appreciate you letting me know this is probably new to you. <laughs> 
So first question, and give me a one through a five, what is Confluence? How comfortable are you with the concept or idea of this platform? Now, Confluence is just a tool. So I think of Confluence like a toolkit. And there's a lot of tools in there. Sometimes there's this weird hammer that I never use, but I have it. So it's important for us to understand what the tool does. And it has a lot of different use cases. Confluence can be used as just a knowledge base. So maybe I'll use an HR example. Maybe my human resources team has uh, policies or other information that they don't want people to edit or touch, but that they want to share and make sure everyone has access to. So they treat it as a, you can't touch this knowledge base, but it lets them control everything they need. Another use case is much more open, a collaboration platform where different teams let you come in and add or remove or change content. This is my typical use case, and it's the one I encourage most folks to use because Confluence is geared towards sharing information. If I'm new to a company, I should have one place I go to learn as much as I need. Or if I'm working on an engineering project or onboarding or any other topic about a company, in my mind, I should be able to go in there. It can also be used for external facing things though. Maybe I have customer documentation. I have a software platform and it's all of my how-to guides, or maybe it's my release notes. And there's many other ways to use it and that you can combine these things. So if you have Confluence at your organization or work, I'll always encourage you to go in and just poke around and see how your team happens to be using it. Okay, a one, two, a five in the chat. Uh, what's a space? And how comfortable are you with that concept? I think of Confluence like a library and like a toolkit. I'll have to work on those analogies. Uh, but in the library, you have different areas for different kinds of books. Your science books are in that corner. Your kids' books are over here. Your magazines are in the front. Spaces are like that. It's just a way to organize your information. Typically, we see spaces used by a team. Human resources has their own space. Maybe recruiting has theirs. Maybe you have it done by process, onboarding offboarding, or maybe by project, my special project to build something, and more audio issues in between when you were talking. All right, thank you for letting me know. I'll see if I can do anything about that as I go. Uh, but spaces allow us to organize that information. And many places have what they call a personal space where you can put your own information that's just for you. Uh, Joanna, I use the library analogy a lot also to think through processes around how we use Confluence. A lot of the failures I see with Confluence or complaints relate to not the tool, but how people use it. And it's a little bit outside the scope of this training, but we have to think about how do we add pages and blogs? Who is going to control that or manage it? How do we take old information out? So pages and blogs, give me your comfort level one through a five. There's two main content pieces. A page will exist in our content tree and a blog exists in the blog posts. They both share things like macros and robust text editing and they can be restricted, but there's differences. My blog posts don't show up in page trees and they also can't use templates, but they are displayed chronologically. So when I look at blogs over time, I'm gonna see blogs going back to whenever we started. I personally use blogs for point in time things, my weekly updates to the team my weekly release notes to internal groups. Pages, on the other hand, are what almost everyone thinks of when they think of Confluence. This is what shows up in our content tree, and I'll show you all of this live in a moment. But it's where we put most of our information. Now, uh, Andy, a uh, blog due to non-usage, a two, totally get it. Jimmy, I imagine it's the same. When I started using Confluence, I didn't know blogs existed. Like, I saw the menu item, but I just didn't know what to do with them, so I never actually interacted with them. Um, this kind of robbed me of the ability to use that feature. Um, so I just tell folks about it because now I find it very useful. Pages are for perennial stuff or reference or resource. Blogs are for that point in time. It doesn't really change. Access is one of the bigger challenges I see folks having. Um, so give me a one to a five for access. This is where most folks get frustrated. They try and go to a page and they can't open it. They try and open a link and it goes nowhere. But there's three main layers to access. We have our instance, our own company's comp copy of Confluence. In these demos, I'll be showing Confluence Cloud, which is hosted by Atlassian in their data centers. There's another, another flavor called Data Center, which chat with your IT team to figure out which one you're at. For the purposes of this, it's the same. But if I don't have access to that instance, that copy of Confluence, I can't see anything in it. 
There are some minor exceptions. There's guest access and anonymous access. I'll talk about that in the space admin training in two weeks. But under the instance level, there's the space. If I don't have access to a space, I don't see anything in it. Again, think of a library. If I'm locked out of a room, I can't open the books inside. The lowest level is the page. And Confluence calls this restrictions. So spaces have access, pages or blogs have restrictions. So I might have access to an instance and a space, but I can't see some pages in there. I'm restricted from viewing them, or maybe I'm just restricted from editing them. So anytime I send someone a link, I double check, does the person I'm sending it to have access to see it? And if I can't open a link, I let the person know, I don't think I have access to open this particular link. For me, I try to make things as open as I can, but there are some legitimate use cases for locking things down, sensitive documents, compensation, termination plans, etc. All right, templates, I think I have one more slide after this, but give me your comfort for templates. This is another feature that no one showed me, so I kind of ignored until I tr you know, decided to click on some buttons one day. I will show you where these live in the system. I did a live training on just templates earlier, I think late last month, it's recorded, I'll do one in the future. Uh, but we'll talk about them here from the standpoint of making it easier to create content. So another major hurdle I see with Confluence is folks click edit or create, and it's just a big blank page, and they don't know where to start. So templates give us the ability to have a framework, a structure on the page that someone can just fill in. So if I'm a software engineer, maybe my sprint plans are templated. So I can go in and just fill in a few fields instead of having to add tables and macros and everything else. If I'm writing policies, maybe I have a policy template. It's supposed to be for me. Uh, using things I have for super simple to use, uh, creating them can be a bit of a pain, and I cover that creating them in that live training just on templates because um, it is an important thing for us to kind of understand. Now, templates live in a single space. Um, so my, oop, I'm sorry, I skipped ahead there. Templates will live in just one space, and they are edited or created by the space admin. So each space will have its own version of the templates. And my last slide before we get hands-on, I promise, collaboration. Um, again, a one to a five, how comfortable you are collaborating. Uh, but a one, a one means you're not comfortable. Uh, but Confluence is also many people have. So you can do that engineering comments. You can come down a word section on a whole page. You can also easily share these. I can copy it. There's also a You can click that and send it to groups of people and add a note. And there's also collaborative editing. If I share the link to someone else, they can jump in and edit with me. There's a way if my team is all the work that I do these days, we can work on it together. So I'll see your mouse or your mouse or mine. We'll content as well. All right, I'm just going to close my presentation real quick. And open up Confluence. The process we've also got hands-on information. And this being good, I will try and cut out the beginning part where my audio was awful and I disappeared and came back and disappeared again. Um, but I will be going through all the questions. So if I missed anything, I'll do my best to have a follow up. Um, but please keep your questions coming. Don't wait for me to stop. I will have some time at the end, five or 10 minutes for just Q&A time. Uh, but as we go, please drop them in. What we're looking at is my home screen of Confluence. And I've zoomed it in just a bit to make it easier to see. But I can always get here by clicking on home. And that's this button here or by clicking on the Confluence logo up in the top. Um, personally, I don't use this particular page too much and that's because I'm comfortable just going to other places in Confluence. But it's an interesting spot on the page because it does things like keep track of where I was before. So if I realize I was on a page that was super interesting and I can't find it, going to the home screen is a great way to remember, hey, what was I doing? And again, I can always get there from home or by clicking on Confluence. Where you left off, this keeps track of where you were. And then if you're following pages, uh, this used to be called watching, and I think they're doing some kind of A-B testing, because I work in some instances that still call it watching, and I'll show you this feature in a minute. But basically bookmarking a page, and then you'll get updates as it changes. So another great way to stay up to date is to follow a page. Those show up here. Now I mentioned spaces. 
There can be a lot of spaces in Confluence. They're typically organized by project or team or process, but it also tracks where I've been in the spaces. I tend to work out of maybe a half dozen, but there's dozens more in my usual office. So I'll also star the interesting ones. And starring is just like bookmarking. I can star them from here just by clicking the star. And I can also star content. So I could star a page or a blog post. Oh, thank you, Olympia. I appreciate you letting me know the sound is popping in and out. Uh, from here, the top menu is almost always going to be visible. I've got the home button. The recent menu for me is very useful. Again, Confluence remembers where I've been. So it knows everything I've looked at. I can see my starred pages or blog posts and I can star or unstar them. And I can even edit them directly from here. So again, this isn't a mind blowing feature, but it's something that I show folks I work with and they kind of go, wow, I could just have clicked there. I don't have to dig around. So a lot of the friction I see in Confluence is folks don't know how to find something and then they don't know a good way to go change it or update it or modify it. This also has pages you've worked on. I happen to work on a lot of different pages, so having this trail of where I've been is very helpful for me. It also keeps track of pages I've created. Again, I happen to be creating a lot of content. You'll notice some of these say draft next to them. Uh, and this is a really bad habit of mine. I tend to make a page and never publish it. Um, so I tend to look at this once a week and just see, hey, where did I forget to push publish? So here I have unpublished changes. Here I have some drafts. My starred pages, I encourage folks to go in and star things they think will be useful. The PTO policies, how does my team operate? Anything like that. And then there's drafts. And again, this is where I'm really bad at updating them. I'm also really bad at naming drafts. I have one here just called like at symbol three exclamation points. Um, so one thing I encourage my team is as soon as you create a page, give it a name that relates to the page. That way, if someone trips over it, they kind of know what it's about instead of leaving them untitled example page. You can see I have some really bad examples here. This one is the default name for a meeting note. Uh, so one easy way to help improve your instance or your copy of Confluence is to just ensure folks are naming things appropriately. Under my spaces menu, I have a list of all the spaces I've been to. I can view all spaces if I need to look for other ones. And I have super admin access in this instance. So I can also create a space. Most users will not be able to do this. Typically, you don't want just anyone going in making new spaces because you want to have a plan for your spaces. Ideally, there's someone at your organization who sits down and maps out what spaces will we need and how will our team use them. This is part of that planning and process that many groups fail to do. So they end up having duplicate spaces. I've been at groups that have two for the HR team, for example, and it's hard to know which one's real. So most folks can't create a space. My teams are just groups of people within Confluence. I don't use these too much. I've been, I've been spoiled in some environments where I have the ability to uh, pull in everyone under a certain manager. And that's because we have some integrations on the back end that make a team for every manager. Typically though, I don't have that luxury. So honestly, I tend to ignore this feature. I could probably get something good out of it by creating and managing teams though, or groups of users. So then I could add access to a group, a team or share it to a whole team. Apps, just like your phone, there's add-ons to Confluence. I'll encourage you to click find new apps when you have a minute and check it out. The Confluence admin, so the instance admin can install these. So if you find a really useful one, that's where to go. And then templates shows you all the templates in the space. We'll look at these in a minute. So now I'm going to go into a space. I'll just click on Robert Heen, and I hope I pick the right one. I always click on the incorrect one when I do these trainings. I got the right one. It has stuff in it. So you'll notice the menus have changed a bit. I now have this sidebar with stuff in it, but I still have my menu at the top, so I can still go home. I still have that big blue create button. And I also have this search bar, which I'll talk about just in a minute. But this is the top level of my space. So I haven't done much to edit it. I've added something about ice cream, but this would be where someone first goes when they click on human resources or engineering or onboarding. So you'll want to make sure that this is inviting and has good information. Now on the left, I've got a lot of other options. So everything in the top here is configurable by your space admin. So I mentioned blogs, they show up here, but there's also analytics and calendars and there's a Q and A feature. Your space admin is hopefully removing features you don't need. I've worked at companies that had the question and answer feature uh, turned on, but individuals would use it, but no one would respond to it. 
So a lot of people were frustrated they'd ask a question and no one would answer. So we also want to think about what features will we not use. Uh, Andy, ideally we have maps before the exploration starts. <laughs> uh, yes, um, I think you're referring to planning out our spaces or pages. So ideally when I make a space, I sit down and I draw out on a whiteboard, a confluence whiteboard, a physical whiteboard, what I want to be in the space. So my structure of my content, and that shows up right here down in the bottom, is organized. It's not just a random smattering of what I think is interesting. It has some structure. All of my Confluence basics goes here. Everything about Confluence and Jira goes here. Everything about how two articles goes here. Having that structure before I start building is really, really helpful. Thank you, Joanna. The recording will be available. There are other ones that don't have all the audio issues, but I really appreciate you coming. Hope you have a great day. Um, in the middle, there's shortcuts. This is something else I didn't know existed until I tripped over it. Um, I joke I beat my head into a keyboard and things happen. Uh, but this lets me put links to either pages in Confluence or to things outside of Confluence. This is my blog. But imagine this is a Tableau dashboard your team uses on a regular basis or some other super important resource. Just stick it right there so folks can find it. Don't make them dig. Don't make them suffer with the process of where is the thing. We can just put it right in their face so they can find it. To add those, I just click the plus. And I can either put in a link, I can give it a name, or pick something that already exists. Now, content is what most people think of most of the time when they think of Confluence. And those are my pages. I have a little plus sign to make a new one. I could also click Create at the top. And this will give me a bunch of options. You can see there's a new one that they're testing called a smart link. The ones that you see in your instance or copy of Confluence may differ. For example, I have signed up for database beta. I said that right, database beta. <laughs> um, but you'll always see page, whiteboard, and blog. So from here, I could create these. I tend to not use a blue create button because it will make it on whatever page I'm looking at. So if I create a page, it will put it at the top level of this space. Some users get flustered by this. So I encourage them instead to go to the content tree. And if they mouse over a page and click plus, it will make that page under this as a child page, it's called. So if I expand this, we'll see there's pages under it, a draft that is very poorly named. Um, but if I click plus again, I'll add another page underneath Confluence plus Jira. So this helps organize my content right away. I don't have to worry about where did it go. If I make a whoopsie, I can always click and drag. So I'll open import example. Maybe using the create button should really be under Confluence plus Jira. I can just click and drag it to its new home. Over time, our spaces will change and grow. And so I tend to go in once every six months and just look at the content and then reorganize it to make it more useful, more beneficial, et cetera. Uh, Jimmy, really good point. We want to make sure we have all the features. Maybe we should intentionally remove some. Uh, by default, Confluence will give us all of these great toys and tools. But just like my toolkit at home, there's some things in there that I don't really know what they're for. I have them in case I need them, but it just takes up space in my toolkit. So when I know I will never use, say, blogs, I'll get rid of it. I can always bring it back, but unless someone comes to me and saying, Rob, I really need this, I don't even want to expose it because then folks might accidentally use it and put some content in the wrong spot or make it hard to find. In my content tree, I also have this little three dot, and these are my menu items. From here, I could edit, rename, etc. I can move it from here. I can also archive and delete. In most instances I work in, I cannot delete content. Um, and this is also a soft delete. It'll sit in a trash can that an admin can go in and then empty. So if someone accidentally deletes one of your pages, it's not gone forever. Just find your space admin and they can pull it out, but they have to act within, I think, 30 days. More commonly, I can archive content. So I'm gonna archive this using create button and I'll just let folks know why I was archived. And this is a great way to clean up my space. That page will then disappear from my content tree. I could still find it though if I need to go search. And I could even view it by clicking view in archive if I have the right permissions. But as I see information is old and stale, I don't want it to sit there. In the same way I wanna get rid of these features that I don't need, I wanna get rid of old versions of policies, really old meeting notes that I don't look at every day. I can still find them if I go up into search and I go all the way down to advanced search at the bottom. 
I'll have an option to search through more filters and show archived content. So this tends to be more of a power user feature. I don't expect my team to know about archiving or how to find it, but I do encourage them to archive old stuff. And then if they need help finding it in three months, six months, a year, we can go in and just check this box and it will show up. The search uh, is also now powered by AI. This to me is one of the best uses of it. Um, the, one of the biggest friction points I see in Confluence is I can't find anything. And that is a combination of the space content is improperly set up. So the names are poor. There's not many keywords. It's kind of like building a website. You almost need SEO search engine optimization to help it find it. But if instead I use artificial intelligence, I can just type in natural language. Um, what would be a good search? Find any. So if I type in find any page about Jira, it's essentially just looking for keywords. But if I click ask AI, I really want to say ask Al, but that really confuses folks. <laughs> we'll see it's going to kind of summarize some information for me. And then it's going to give me sources. So it also lets me check its work. In this instance, I don't have a lot of great examples. But imagine at your work, you have a new hire who can't find PTO policies. Instead of struggling and fighting with search or a poorly constructed page tree, they can just go in and use natural language. They do have to know to click Ask AI, and it does show up in my search bar here. I'll just, oop, I don't think I can draw a circle around it, but off to the right, there's this Ask AI button, and it does the same thing. So I'm really pushing my teams to use this feature instead of the, the basic search, I'll call it, because it does help find things a little bit more quickly. Back to my space, we're gonna make some content. Now, if anyone has a specific kind of page I'd like to make, drop it in the chat. I tend to make up really bad examples like at sign, exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. Um, but I'm gonna add a new page under Confluence Basics. So the first thing I might wanna do is expand it. And I can click this little tiny, I call this the carrot, this little tiny arrow. And that tells me there are child pages or sub pages of this one. So I'll click to expand to see what's under it. And we'll see I have a couple of drafts, how to use things. This looks like the right spot to put my new content. Then I'll just push this plus sign. And that will insert this content underneath whatever page I clicked on. So a new child page. This is my preferred method of making content just because I know exactly where it's going under the page that I clicked the plus on. There's been a recent UI change, I think in the past month, um, before the menu at the top and the sidebar would vanish when we edited. Now it shows up. I think it's pretty useful. It does restrict my editing space a little. So if you mouse over the sidebar, you'll see that little sideways and you can collapse it. I like to have an open space when I create. I don't like the clutter. Um, so I get rid of it when I can. Off to the right, we'll see my templates. And if we recall from the slides earlier, which hopefully came through okay, templates exist in a single space. Now Confluence comes with, I think, 130 or so templates just right out of the box. Check out the recording on my templates training or come to the next live one. I'll dig into what these are, how to edit them, etc. But for the average user, we just need to know that templates exist and that you can search through them. Many folks look at this and go, how do I know which one to pick? Because there's 133. Honestly, I only use like three or four templates on a regular basis. So what I do is I star them. If you notice on some of these, there's this lit up star right here. And that is just like a bookmark. And I can unstar them if I don't need them. But if I go up to the top, I have these quick filters right here. I can just click on my templates and I see just the six I've starred. Now my admin, my space admin can also feature templates. So hopefully my space admin has been nice and gone in and said some of these are featured. They'll just pop up to the top when I click on Featured. Ooh, awesome question. Um, comparing Atlassian versus Azure. Documentation features, can I make a comparison? I can't. I haven't used Azure. The last Microsoft product I really used was SharePoint, and that was about 10 years ago. So I'm sure the product has changed. What I can do, though, is ask around and see if I can find any more information. I'll have a follow-up video with all the questions and comments. Um, on my YouTube channel, hopefully within a week or two, and I can try and get you some of that information. Um, but I appreciate the call out. There are a ton of different tools that help us document and do things. 
I am biased towards Confluence because that happens to be the tool I have. Many people think, oh, Rob loves Confluence. It's the best thing in the world. I go, honestly, it's the tool that I've been given. And so I have to make the most of it because that's what I have. I haven't been given the luxury of multiple options. So I've learned it. I've engaged with it. I've figured out how to use templates to make my life easier and to help make the lives of my coworkers easier. I can also do a text search. So if I know there's a how-to template in here somewhere, but I can't find it, I can just type in how-to. So this is something I always show folks. The other thing I can do is look through different spaces. So because a template is unique to a space, even if a copy of it exists in another space, it will be a different template. So this is good flexibility. It allows different spaces to modify or create templates that are unique to them. Um, but it can be annoying because if there's a template I really like, I have to go find it. This is how I would do that. I'm gonna use a template. I'll just mouse over how to article. This is honestly one I use quite a bit at work. I'm constantly writing these guides for my support teams. If I mouse over it, I'll see what it looks like and then I'll just click, click on it to populate the page. Right away, I wanna give it a title. As I mentioned earlier, we want to try to avoid a whole bunch of pages called untitled. <laughs> so I might call this uh, how to compare Azure. And I'll just use that as an example of a name. I don't really know anything about it right now. And then if we look, there's some text on the screen. All of the light gray stuff, it last thing calls placeholder text. If I publish this page, that text will not show up. That's intended to guide the content creator in what to do. So when we make a template, we can add placeholder text to remind folks policy information goes here. Who owns the policy? When does the policy expire? Again, reducing the friction. I have someone new to Confluence. I don't want them fighting with the editor. I don't want them having to suffer and go ask, figure out who to ask what goes on here. I just want to show them and I want to make their life as easy as possible so they can get on with their job. From here, I just add whatever information I need. Again, I'll very poor example of just step one, step two, <laughs> step three. And I do have some editing options. I've got this whole bar right here of different items. I can do things like bold text. And if I select it, I can make it bold or italic, whole bunch of different things, change the color. One thing that did frustrate me when I first started using Confluence, and I don't know why my textiles are locked right now, but I can't change the font size. And this is a common complaint. You know, it's not like a Word doc where I can kind of do whatever I want. I'm stuck with the feature set that the group created. Oh, seeing some questions, love it. How can I enable Ask AI? Oh, <laughs> um, Ask, uh, the AI feature was released to, I think everyone on premium or higher in Confluence Cloud in mid-January. I really should know this because I wrote a blog post about it. <laughs> um, but if your group is using premium or higher, you should be able to see that Ask AI feature. If you're using a free version of Confluence, which is a great tool to have so you can go play with it, you won't have access to AI. And that, that's okay because typically those are smaller things for personal use. The other thing I do, oh, it's back. Um, my headers, I'll just add some test text. This is how I'll change the font size. And again, I'm limited to six, but headers have two great features. They talk to macros, and I'll show you a macro in a moment, but I can also hyperlink to them. So if I have a big long page, I can give someone a hyperlink directly to one part of it that has a header. This saves people from having to scroll and scroll and scroll. Um, so if I publish this, I'll quickly show you that hyperlink and then I'll come back in and show you what that, um, what macros are. If I mouse over my header, I can see this copy link to heading. If I click that and then send that link to someone, it will send them directly to the header. Now this is a silly example because there's not a lot on this page, but you'll notice it scrolled down and test is right at the top. So even though it's a short page, it still sent me right there. So when I'm making content, I'm always thinking through what headers do I want? They visually break up my space, but they also have a lot of great features like direct linking and they tie into macros. So a macro is just like a little program that runs on the page that's extra functionality. And I can find them by clicking on this plus icon right here or by typing a forward slash on the page. So either one is good. I tend to forward slash, that's just the habit I've been in. I'll encourage you to look at the macros that you have in your instance. Depending on marketplace add-ons, like additional apps that have been installed, you might have more, but this is just kind of the stock list. 
For this example, I'll find the table of contents. And what this will do is insert a table of contents that's hyperlinked, and then it pulls in all the headers. Now I won't dig too much into the features behind each macro, but I can do things like limit it to which size headers do I want to display. But this is a super easy way to quickly spin up a page that is much more useful to the end user. I don't have to go and maintain this, it just shows up, and when someone comes here, they can just click to go to the thing. So headers are really important. It's the best way we, the only way we have to change text size. Okay, we're technically at time. I will keep going though if folks want to stay on um, because we had those problems in the front. And again, I'm sorry about that. Um, but I'm gonna check for questions and please drop them in uh, quickly. How can I, ooh, how can I remove a space from my space list from Marie? I assume you're referring to this menu. Your recent spaces will eventually just fall off as you go to more spaces. And I forget the number, but as you keep looking at different spaces, so let's pretend I'm browsing around and I open a couple, my spaces menu will keep updating based on the spaces I'm in. I'm just picking random ones. Ooh, it didn't add Lamarck. Lamech, wow. If I want to get rid of the starred ones, I just need to unstar them. So that might be what you're referring to. It should also be tracking the ones you've recently been to, and those just kind of hang around. Okay, any other specific questions before I talk for another five or six minutes on blogs? <laughs> I'm gonna go back to MySpace so I don't mess up Andrews too much. I briefly mentioned that way at the start that you might have a personal space. So if we look, there's a Heen.tech space and a Robert Heen space. When I see a space named after a person, that's a personal space. Your Confluence admin may have enabled this feature. It might not be there though, and that's okay. But this is something everyone gets, and it's, where I, it's kind of like my junk drawer in my house. Don't tell my team this but it's where I put all of my own personal meeting notes or pages I'm building out that I'm not quite ready to share or think my one-on-one -on -one documents or my own thoughts. So it gives me my own area, my own space uh, to put my own information, <clears throat> excuse me. So within my personal space, I'm gonna click on blogs and I mentioned that they're stored chronologically. They're not in a structure. So my blogs won't have child blogs. Instead, it will just show them by when they were published. And I think I say this every training, but I really need to put more in here to make this a better example. <clears throat> Excuse me. But if I click on the dates, it will filter just to that year or that time period. Personally, I use this for weekly updates. This might be a sprint update. This might be a product release. It might be what my team did or what I did. But it's a great way to see going back in time what has been done. To make a new one, I just click on plus. This is a separate permission in a space. So it is possible for you to be able to make a page but not a blog or vice versa. So if you don't see the plus, check with your space admin to see if you have that access. You'll notice it looks almost identical to a page. It says blog post title. There's also no templates. That's the only big difference. Otherwise, this, it's exactly the same. I give it a title and I'll add some notes. I want to note to myself to fix that audio issue. And then from here, I could publish it. Now, they've added this recently, but this is my access controls. They show up when I publish, and they also show up in this little tiny lock icon right here. So these are my restrictions. Do I want to restrict the ability for people to do things? I could say anyone can see it, but only people I designate can edit it. And by default, that's me. I can just type in names to add more, or I can hide it entirely, except from a small group of people. I try not to use the hide it entirely, only specific people can view, because in my mind, Confluence is open. It's for sharing information. So I try to make my spaces and pages and blogs as open as possible. There are legitimate cases, though, where you want to either restrict editing, think your HR policies, your important documentation that people need to see but not touch, or lock it entirely. I work on a few projects that I don't want people to trip over yet, so I lock it so no one can see it until I'm ready to share it. 
So if I click apply, the lock icon will change. It becomes a closed red lock. And this is a visual indication that it's locked down. Now, if I were to give this hyperlink to someone, oop, let me publish this. If I give the hyperlink to someone and they don't have access, they're not on that list, they'll just get a, a message saying this page doesn't exist or you don't have access. So they won't know if it's a real page or if they don't have access. Similarly, if I click share, which is another way I can collaborate, it's going to warn me people might not be able to view it due to restrictions. And from here, I could type in a name of a person or of a, te or of a team to send it to. I tend to use the hyperlink. I'm super lazy. Copy, paste, put it in Slack, put it in email. But the share button does let you add a message. Why is this interesting? Why should these people care? And that can be very important to give them context about why you're sending them email. <laughs> Another way we can collaborate is we can select text and you'll see this comment button. Uh, very quickly, define is another AI feature. You'll see a blue squiggly line under some words in Confluence. Um, imagine your group has specific acronyms. This will try to define what that acronym is. It's a pretty cool feature if you don't know what words mean. So anywhere I see a little blue squiggle under things, I go define and it will best guess, tell me what it is and then send me to a page that has that information. But I can also comment. And this is just like I use Google Docs, so commenting in Google Docs. So I want Andrew to help me out and remind me to fix this problem. He'll get a notification in his email, and visually on the screen I have this yellow text. So I can click on that to see it. I can also click on this show inline comments at the top to expose them all. I could also mouse over a block of text, and I can add a comment on the whole block. So it might be a line, it might be a paragraph, but I could comment on an entire thing. I can also comment on the whole page. I drive a lot of internal folks nuts by putting in comments with typos, with inaccurate information or old stuff, because I want folks to go fix it. So sometimes folks go to a page and there's four or five comments from Rob saying, is this up to date? Have you corrected this yet? This is a great way to collaborate and to let folks asynchronously share information. Okay, I'm a couple minutes over. I've got one last slide to show you, which is just what's next. Um, we've covered a lot in this training, so please take time to think it through. And if you have a Confluence instance, whether it's at work or your own personal one, please go go into it. Don't click delete or you know buttons that look look like that, but go play with it. The best way to learn is to get hands on. That said, Atlassian has a great community. Community at community.atlassian.com, that's a great message board where there's dozens if not hundreds of people helping answer questions of all types. In there, there's also free training from uh, Atlassian University as well as things like certifications. So it's a great resource to learn how to use their systems generically. Again, explore your instance. Getting hands-on, best way to learn. I've got a lot of content on YouTube. I try and post something about every week and I will, you'll see this video there as well as other live ones. And I do my best to post Q and A follow up with the questions and answers for every question. So check out my YouTube channel. It's down there at the bottom. You're looking at it right now as well. If you have a minute, also subscribe just so you get those updates, but also look up other people's content. Talking to more people about our systems and how to use them is important. We all have a different perspective and we can all learn a lot from each other in how the tool is used. You know, the example I think of is a hammer. I thought it was only for hitting nails in, but you can also pull nails out with it. You can use it for other things than just smashing things down. Same thing with Confluence. How do people use pages in their environment? How, what can I learn from that? So keep exploring and learning. And then talk internally. I was spoiled at one environment. We had a whole team that only managed our Atlassian products. I learned a ton from that group, and I'm still really good friends with one of them. So keep asking questions about it especially somewhere where you're frustrated or you're suffering. If it gets in the way of your job, that's a good indication you should go look for help. I've also got a lot of Udemy courses on topics like how to set up a knowledge base or a ticketing system or what's project management. So check out that QR code. I think they're discounted, uh, but feel free to take those as well. All right, I'll stay on for another couple minutes. I've kept you 10 minutes over. I hope that's okay, but please put any last minute questions in the chat uh, and I'll quickly go through it to see if I've missed anything. have all the features. Oh, yep, the Ask AI. Andy's saying he removes blog posts from spaces because they don't need them. That's a great thing to do. Uh, if folks don't see the blog 
option on the left, your space admin has turned it off. They might have determined you don't need it. So again, paring down what people see visually is very helpful. Less stuff on the screen means they can focus on the important things. Uh, a way to use styles. I don't believe so. Um, I'm going to pop back into Confluence very, very quickly. The editor is fairly limited in that sense. Um, I have these options in terms of formatting, and I have a very limited color palette. And I don't know the exact reason why Atlassian chose to do this other than to keep it a little bit on Rails. Um, but I'm limited in the fonts, in the sizes, and that kind of thing. Is there a way to reduce white space or edit CSS? Kind of. Um, I'll have to double check on this one for you. Uh, but as a space admin, if I go in, there are some options to do things like modify the header footer, which I'm just fell out of my head. Um, I'll get a response for you though, Olympia, and just let you know what I find. All right, team. That uh, Marie, I'm glad glad you found it useful. I'm glad it's motivating. Uh, please engage with it. It's a great tool if you have it. The challenge is learning how to use it because it can be intimidating and it can be really annoying if you don't know how to do something in there. Um, so please reach out if you have any questions or need help. Um, otherwise, thank you all so much for bearing with me and suffering through that issue at the start. Uh, again, I promise I'll figure that out and Andrew's going to help keep me honest on that one. Uh, but I appreciate everyone taking time out of their morning, afternoon, or evening to join us. Uh, if you get a follow-up survey, I think we're sending those out, please let us know what you think. It helps me improve this. It helps it last to do better content. And if you have co uh, ideas for other topics in Confluence, please let me know. I'd love to put together other trainings that folks would find useful. But I'll keep doing these basics every month, as well as a more advanced one like being a space administrator or templates. So thank you all again. I really appreciate you taking time out of your life. Um, and I hope you have a great Thursday 